uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Dr. Peter Phillips, this is Therese Turner-Jones, the mission head of the IDB in Jamaica. Mr. Paul Allstrom of Alta Ventures, one of our key speakers this morning, amongst others. Sandra, I beg your pardon, Susanna Garcia Robles, principal investment officer in charge of the multilateral investment funds early stage equity group. Um, there are a number of others who I will have missed. Um, I want to, first of all, thank everybody that is present this morning, investors, fund managers, innovators, entrepreneurs, local and international speakers, colleagues from Jamaica's financial sector. Your presence this morning is evidence that there is a tremendous amount of interest in the development of a venture capital industry in Jamaica, and so there should be. It gives me a level of satisfaction and confirms that our decision to launch this initiative, the Jamaica Venture Capital Program, is an appropriate one at this time. The mission of the DBJ in facilitating economic growth is paramount in all that we do. Over the years, we have allocated significant resources to the provision of loan financings to MSMEs through our approved financial institutions and approved microfinance institutions. We do this because we recognize that in particular, small and medium-sized entities are the primary drivers of growth and employment creation in most economies around the world. From the provision of financing and credit enhancement solutions to business, our focus on energy as we assist companies and individuals to adopt renewable energy and alternative energy sources as a means of reducing the country's enormous import bill. Our efforts to constantly improve the capacity of MSMEs through programs of training and technical assistance, the Development Bank of Jamaica has been at the heart of efforts to develop the country and provide new ways to stimulate our economy. I am particularly proud of one of the bank's most innovative and pioneering projects, the Mobile Money for Microfinance pilot project, in which customers of microfinance institutions will be able to use their cell phones to receive loan disbursements and make loan repayments, transfer funds from one person to another, and carry out commercial activities, such as person-to-person -person business transactions and payments for goods and services. This platform has the potential to dramatically reduce the cost of doing business for microfinance lenders and pave the way for significant interest rate reductions that have the potential to greatly increase the addressable market of such institutions. As importantly, the findings of this project will be used as the basis for the development of policies covering the operation of all aspects of mobile money services in Jamaica. However, ladies and gentlemen, and in spite of all of the efforts I have described, we recognize that there continues to be a persistent gap when it comes to longer term SME financing. In looking around at new ways of providing financing to SMEs, the DBJ views the availability of venture capital as one such solution to address the issue of lack of access to long-term patient financing required by high potential small and medium-sized enterprises as well as innovative startups. It is against this background that today's conference is being held under the theme Advancing Innovation and Entrepreneurs, Seeding Tomorrow's Opportunities. Today's event should be seen as an occasion for knowledge sharing and development. Today's event sees the coming together of many parties, those on the demand side, those on the supply side, 
and those who are responsible for creating the kind of environment that is conducive to investment generally and venture capital investment in particular. We review the nexus between the innovator and the investor, the entrepreneur and the venture capitalist, the fund manager and the fund. We will look critically at what obtains in Jamaica today and what are the possibilities, what are the ideals and what are the gaps to be filled in order to create a sustainable venture capital and private equity market. I want to just crave your indulgence in allowing me to get back to some basics. Over the past couple of months, most of you would have heard the term ecosystem in relation to venture capital. I would like the opportunity to share a definition with you this morning. A venture capital ecosystem serves the purpose of bridging the financial gap for companies, especially SMEs. The main pillars of a VC ecosystem can, consider, can be considered to be, firstly, investors who are interested in, and very importantly, understand the asset class. Secondly, venture capital fund managers with the necessary business acumen and commitment to the effort. And finally, good companies interested in and ready to receive VC investments. And so, ladies and gentlemen, today we have brought together some of the very best experts from Jamaica, the Caribbean, Latin and North America to address the subject matter under today's conference theme. These experts will be discussing the nexus, as I have described, of the innovator to the investor to the fund manager. They will give you insights on what an entrepreneur should be looking for in a venture capitalist, as well as the reverse, what the venture capitalist will be looking for in entrepreneurs. I am excited and eager to participate in these discussions the deliberations and the decisions that will emerge from this event will feed the policy making process for the establishment of the industry going forward. I want to say a word also about private sector involvement. It is not the intention of the DBJ to own this project in the long term. Without a doubt, we want to be involved and within the next 12 months, it is our intention to provide seed funding to a newly established VC fund or funds. But we also want to ensure sustainability. And our main objective is therefore to lay the proper foundation of a vibrant and sustainable venture capital and private equity industry that is driven by the private sector. We want all parties to provide direction, and that is the reason that we have sought to bring you all here together today. It is only after today's launch that the rubber really hits the road. The DBJ is cognizant of the fact that information is perhaps the most powerful tool to guide the process that we have embarked upon. And so the DBJ team will implement a direct and focused information dissemination program involving training, including brown bag launches with students at the tertiary levels and elsewhere. It will cover formal courses, speeches, and the sharing of experiences. The objective of all of this is, into, is to ensure that all stakeholders are on the same page. The team, I know, is up to the task and we have been assured of the continued support and guidance of our developmental partners. Indeed, we could not do it alone, and I want to use this opportunity this morning to express our deep appreciation to the Inter-American Development Bank and its investment agency, the Multilateral Investment Fund. Over the past several years, our partnership with the IDB has flourished to the extent that this relationship is recognized by us as one of the most important partnerships in general for the DBJ. 
microfinance industry interventions, or various energy programs, the mobile money project, capacity building efforts within our privatization division, and many more areas of activity have, benefit, have benefited from not just the financial support of the IDB, but also from sage advice and counsel born out of their vast developmental experience across Latin America and the Caribbean. And of course, we thank them today for the tremendous help in the form of grants and technical cooperation in our efforts to design and establish the program that we launched today. We have a long way to go, and I know that we will be able to rely on them and our other development partners to provide us their support in making the Jamaica Venture Capital Program a successful reality. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that Jamaica is at an inflection point. Gone are the days when investors could depend upon high rail rates of interest on government paper. We have recently heard of the IMF's positive remarks coming out of the first quarterly review under their current program with Jamaica. Under that same program, the government has also committed to a series of structural and policy reforms that I believe have the potential to transform the Jamaican environment for business generally and venture capital in particular. It is therefore very timely that a program such as this should be launched at this juncture in our economic history. I would like to assure everyone here of the continued support of the Development Bank of Jamaica in facilitating the program's success. I give this unsolicited and unequivocal, unequivocal support on behalf of my fellow board members, management and staff, and if I may dare say, our portfolio minister, Minister Phillips. Welcome to you all, and let us all together today seize the opportunities. Thank you very much.